I first read about the story of uh, Through the Gates of Splendor, the story of Nate Saint, Jim Elliott, the five missionaries who went to Ecuador in the 50s to try and reach a very savage tribe known as the Alcas. I was radically just transformed by the story and it left its mark on my life, but I never imagined that I would get to share this story uh, as I have on this tour with my friends just like you night after night. I started doing some research on the internet and I came across a couple of articles written by Steve Saint. And I thought, is this the same C Steve Saint that was five years old when his dad was killed? And I read about in the book, Through the Gates of Splendor. And we began to talk and email. And Steve told me um, about Minkai. And he said, you know, my, my children call this man grandfather. This is a dear man to our family. He's here with me right now in the United States. This is one of the six men who attacked and killed my dad. And I'd love for, for us to meet him to meet you and you to meet us. And I said, oh, that would just, that would be beyond my wildest dreams. You're gonna have to sort of imagine here with me for a minute that, that we're, we're still at a concert, but this is something a little different. We're gonna kind of go on a journey together. If you're up for an adventure tonight, anybody here up for a little great adventure? All right, come on. We're going to the Amazon jungles of Ecuador. futures in many different fields. They were the movers and shakers of their time. They were adventurers. Five men, passionate and obedient for the sake of the call of God. Sing 
they were brave, they were spirited, they were pushing the boundaries of traditional views. They were innovators and pioneers of their time. They were adventurers, five women passionate, obedient for the sake of the call of God. For a dream or a promise, simply because it is Jesus who calls, and if we believe, we'll obey yeah, and we'll answer. Will you sing it with me? So the team of Operation Alka was born, and time was of the essence. The oil companies were weary of struggling with the indigenous peoples who stood in the way of their oil. The government was embarrassed because they couldn't control their citizens, and the tribe was in jeopardy at their own hands due to intertribal warfare. No matter who struck first, extinction seemed inevitable. So in the fall of 1955, just before the flood season began, the missionary team realized they had a window of time. They stepped through it. lived a group of people in darkness, people that had never been introduced to their Creator. No one had ever brought them the good news of God's love. They had to be told before it was too late. The missionary team felt this was the reason they were alive. They knew that others had gone before them unsuccessfully. It's no small thing to try and bridge the 20th century and the Stone Age, wrote Nate Saint. They knew they had a lot to lose. But he is no fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain that which he cannot lose. And so the day came, the moment they had fasted and prayed and hoped for. The overtures of friendship had been successful and the missionaries made the first known peaceful contact between the feared Alcas and the outside world, complete with peanut butter sandwiches, insect repellent, and an airplane ride. Their moment had arrived. With your message of peace What is that look 
in your eyes Why have you come to this far away place What is this story you would lay down your life to tell What kind of love can this be There is no greater love than this And there is no greater gift That can ever be given To be willing to die So another might live And there is no greater Imagine being five years old, a time when daddy is your hero. How do you tell a child the most tragic news of his young life? This is not the end of the story. 
As is the case with God, sometimes what seems like a tragic end is really a miraculous beginning. One of the wives of the five martyrs and the sister of another were compelled to continue what was begun. Elizabeth Elliot and Rachel Saint had studied the Alka language with an Alka woman named Dayuma, who had escaped from the tribe during a killing raid and was now living in a nearby village. Then one day, in an unprecedented act, three Alka women emerged from the jungle. They came with an invitation to the women. Come live with us and tell us of the man-maker. Rachel, Elizabeth, and little Valerie Elliot took a step of faith and followed a trail never before walked by an outsider. One by one, the tribe responded to the good news. Little by little, the Bible was translated into their language. Rachel Saint lived out her entire life with the people she loved so dearly. At her funeral in 1994, the Waldani offered a second invitation for an outsider to live with them. A boy whose history was intertwined with theirs was asked to walk with them into the future. The original vision of Operation Alka 1956 came full circle as Nate Saint's son, Steve, uprooted his family and headed for the Amazon to join the Waldani as they followed God's trail. And now they are no longer the Alka, the savage. They call themselves simply the people, the wild guy. My heart is restless as I wander through this jungle. The trees above refuse to let the sunlight through. And somewhere deep inside, I hear the whispered longing that tell me I was made for more. This a blinding flash of light falls down into the darkness. Slowly I notice strange new markings on the trail. The crimson. 